Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Bert the Stormtrooper and this is the home of That's Just Prime, the comprehensive Optimus Prime review series. I also review other Transformers, lots of G1 stuff, as well as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, GoBots, and pretty much any other toy that may jump out at me. I also do the occasional arcade and pinball machine videos, unboxings, blogs, challenges, and miscellaneous videos where my daughter usually makes fun of me. Those are a lot of fun. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. Please be sure to click that subscribe button and don't forget to give me a thumbs up and share if you like what you see. Hello and welcome, I'm Bertha Stormtrooper and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Transformers G1 Retro Reissue Headmaster Weird Wolf and Mongso? Pretty sure this guy used to be called Mondo. Released in February, March of 2021, this is brand new and starting to hit store shelves right now as of the time of this recording. It is a Walmart exclusive and it retails for approximately $20. I just found this one this morning at my local Walmart. So you can see here that Weird Wolf and Mondo, Monzo, Monzo, whatever they want to call them, <laughs> is packaged in the window. Uh, right here on the front, we got the little window showing us the headmaster. And then on the bigger window in the center, we can see Weird Wolf right there in his beast mode, his wolf mode. Uh, next to that, we've got some really cool artwork of uh, Weird Wolf itself. And it's, I, I have to note that they did change the name back to Weird Wolf. Well, originally, when it was uh, when this was the Titans Return figure, they called it something else. It wasn't Weird Wolf. They, they called it something else. They've called him Weird Wolf again, but that name, Mon Monzo, to Monk, so that's, that's weird to me. On the top here, we've got pictures showing us the transformation sequence to go from vehicle to ro or for beast to robot. Pictures of the figure on the side showing us both the vehicle, not, I keep saying vehicle, the uh, beast mode and the robot mode. We're gonna have that on both sides. And then on the back, we've got that splash work. And again, we've got that Fort Max and Scorponok battle scene going on back there. We've got tech specs, a bio for Weird Wolf right there. So that is about it for the packaging. Let's go get it opened up and check it out. And here we have Weird Wolf out of the package and I love this toy. Out of the box, Weird Wolf comes included with his transector body or Weird Wolf himself, his sword, which is gonna turn into his tail for the wolf mode, his gun, Monzo or Monkso, his headmaster, and his sheet of instructions. Taking a quick look at the sheet of instructions again, they are done in that G1 style, that print, that purple and white in uh, just the black outlines that the G1 figures look like. This is really cool. I love these instructions and the way they look so G1. This is so, so cool. And again, here we have Weird Wolf again. We're gonna go ahead and take the sword and we're just gonna plug it in the back here to form his tail. And there we have the wolf mode. And the wolf mode is approximately eight inches long from head to tail, about three and a half inches tall. And Monzo himself is gonna be like the other Titan Masters or Headmasters, approximately an inch and a half tall, tiny little dude. And we've got this gun right here. We'll set the gun off to the side, start with Monzo or Monzo. Again, very cool little dude. We'll try and get in close. And again, I love the way that these guys look so close to the original G1 Headmasters. Check that out. You've got the gray body with the red head and then the blue forearm or arms and legs right there. Very, very cool. Very good approximation of the original G1 Headmaster. Just going all the way around. Go ahead, I forgot to flip. I forgot to flip that up, didn't I? There we go. Just taking a look at them for all the way around. And again, you know, the original ones had that flap on the back so you could cover up the head. The new ones don't do that, but there you go. Very, very cool, really loving. So you got these two side by side for comparison. Really, really loving how they're making these guys look so much like the originals. Articulation wise, his head is on a ball joint so you can move it around side to side and a little bit of up and down side to side, that kind of thing. The shoulders are on a ball joint so his arms can go forward. Uh, that far and down that far they can go so go in and out and on this one you got quite a range of outward movement with the arms very cool and again just like the other ones the legs are going to be articulated joined together but articulated at the hips and knees so you can do sitting positions like that and like that so that you can get them inside of weird wolf and we'll go ahead and do that i absolutely love what they've done here with the entrance for him actually before i put him in there Let's take a look at the gun real quick. I love this gun. It's considerably bigger than the original G1 gun, but I really, really love what they've done here. Here's the original G1 gun. Let me get a good grip on these guys so you can see these guys side by side. So, you know, 
it's not exactly a reproduction of the G1 gun. Um, and it's considerably bigger than the original gun. But I absolutely love the way this looks, and I love the way it interacts with the uh, wolf mode, which and, uh, and with also with the robot mode, a uh, couple of options that we can do there. But this is something that the original couldn't do. You could not integrate the weapon into the wolf. This guy does it. So, again, Monzo can just kind of sit in here, and you got yourself a little gunner station. And with these two slots right here, you can actually tab the gun to the top of Weird Wolf right there, which is very, very cool. And I absolutely love, I am really digging the look of Weird Wolf with a cannon up on top. Absolutely love that. I really, really, really dig this look. But again, we'll go ahead and pop that off real quick. We'll take Monzo off. And again, we're going to go ahead and open the cockpit. I love what they did to the cockpit here where they actually made a cockpit whereas the original just had the big red window we'll take a look at that in a second this actually looks like the cockpit of a vehicle of a jet or an all-terrain vehicle or something futuristic like that this gives me like almost like zoids vibe or e almost like even a voltron but i know voltron alliance this is a wolf but it just gives me that Voltron vibe or a Zoids vibe in all the best ways. I love that cockpit there. That is so, so cool. I am really, really digging this figure. So we'll go ahead and pop this open. It hinges forward. Plenty of room in there for Monzo. So we'll go ahead and sit him in there. And he'll just slot right in, just like that. Close the cockpit, and he's ready to go. Did I not get him in there all the way? Maybe I didn't get him in there all the way. There you go. And there you go. He's ready to go. That is so, so cool. And again, you can take the gun and slot it right there on the back. And I absolutely dig that. That is such a cool looking weird wolf. Real quick for comparison, here he is with G1 Weird Wolf. And again, yeah, I, I'm going to say this right now. I was not expecting a lot out of this figure based on my experience with the G1 figure right uh the g1 figure is is again it's good for nostalgia purposes but let's face it this is not a great figure and i was a little disappointed with this one uh because of the q it's it's because it's a ko and i did get some qc It's one of the rare ko figures that i got qc issues with um it just kind of killed my experience with this one and and realistically this is not a great toy um and I'm not talking about it being the KO, just in general. The mold, the robot, the transformation. It, it, it's cool because of the, again, because of the, the nostalgia factor. But uh, it's, generally speaking, in terms of toys and playability, not a great toy. Because of that, I was not expecting a whole lot out of this guy. This was the sleeper for me. I think out of all the reissued Decepticons the, or the Titan Return G1 style reissued Decepticons, this has been my favorite. Absolutely adore this figure. This is such an amazing... If you're only going to pick up one, this is the one to get. Uh, I, I, can't, I cannot recommend this figure enough, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So there they are compared together. We'll take the gun off, show the details real quick love the way this guy looks again this guy gives me like almost a voltron vibe or a soids vibe in all the best way they did the robot wolf and it just works it is so so cool i really dig this love the details on this guy articulation wise the jaw can open and close the head can move side to side a little bit. I, does it have any up and down? No, it's just side to side right there. Of course, the shoulders here, these are on a ball joint, so I'm forward, backward, all the way around, a little bit of in and out. Uh, these can rotate right here at the knee, forward and backwards, and then the ankles are on a ball joint right there as well. The back, uh, the hips right there, also on ball joint, so you can move these forward and backwards. Now, you are going to be hindered by this armor right here. You're, you're not going to be able to do like, I've tried. I've tried to do like with the legs forward like that. And it just doesn't work. He, he kind of ends up being weird, I guess, for a weird wolf, right? Uh, just the, the the armor really gets in the way, but they are on ball joints. You also have a hinge right there at the knee, and then at the ankle, uh, I guess the second knee is also hinged, or is that, that's a ball joint also. And then the ankles are also on ball joints, so a lot of posability here in the tail. You can rotate it, uh, no up and down on the tail. That's about it. 
So now one more comparison will bring. Well, I, I just I just like putting that cannon up there. So we'll do that again, and then for comparison, real quick, we'll bring in Mind Wipe, and we'll bring in Skull Cruncher. So now we have all of the original G1. Uh, yes, they're not G1. I get a lot of comments about that. These are not the G1s. Yes, I know they're not G1s. They're Titan Return reissues, redecoed and um, repurposed to more closely resemble the G1 figures. So they, there is the whole team put together. Really, really liking these guys. Uh, if you guys saw my review of Mindwipe, um, I was a little disappointed with him. These two guys knocked it out of the park. Weird Wolf especially. So there you go. There's the whole team together for you. We'll set these guys off to the side and we'll get this guy front and center. Now, getting into transformation, we'll go ahead and take the cannon, take it off, set it off to the side, go ahead and take the tail, pull that off and set it off to the side. And yeah, we need to get Monzo. <laughs> I almost started with Monzo still in there. Let's go ahead and get Monzo or Monxo or whatever you want to call him. Let's get him out of there and close that up. Um, so this guy does a lot of cool stuff with the transformation also. Let's see, where do we want to get started? Let's start with the legs we'll go ahead and straighten these out just straighten them all the way back and we'll take all of this and just stretch it out these armor plates are going to hinge out and down and just kind of snap into place there and there and there's a lot of cool stuff that this guy does that it kind of feels like they took a page out of beast wars where they flip stuff around so they put the robot parts on one side and the beast parts on the other and it works perfectly. So we're going to take the feet and we're going to flip these around. And then we'll take the foot, the robot foot, and flip it forward. Do the same on this side. This one tends to pop off a little bit. I haven't been able to find. There's the burr or something there that makes it pop off. But there it is. And there you go. The robot feet are done. Again, very much like, reminds me of Beast Wars where, you know, you flip stuff around uh, to have uh, alt mode on one side and robot mode on the other. The arms are going to see that again as well. We're going to take the cockpit. We're going to open this up. Check this out. This is so cool. So you see how the robot or the, the wolf uh, body is so long and which, you know, realistic to what a wolf body would be, right? So we're going to shorten this up for the robot. And this is really, really cool. This is double hinge right here. So we're going to pop this out and then we're going to use that double hinge to move this all the way forward and back in. And then we can close this up. Once these guys fall all the way in place, there you go. And then we could close this up. So that compacts the body in to make for a good robot mode. Absolutely love the way that works. And since we're here, you can take the uh, wolf head and it's just tab right there and pop it back and just let it rest right there. And the, the this is cool because the ears of the wolf are actually going to go into these two slots right there, which is going to help everything kind of um, fit, fill in and uh, fit a little flatter and not stick out as much. Love that. Bring the arms down, and again, here we go again with the flipping. We're going to take these, we're going to turn them around, and then we're going to flip this over and bring out the fist, and then close that back up again. And as you saw, the paw for the for the wolf is just going to go straight up like that. And there is one arm done. Again, flip the paw up, rotate this, open the panel, bring out the fist, and close that back up again. And there you go, there is the robot mode done absolutely love that and this robot mode is so so cool the only thing left is to bring monzo fold them over to form the head and pop him right in and there we have weird wolf in robot mode here in robot mode weird wolf stands approximately five and a half inches tall and again this is such a perfect i think this is the one that they accomplished the best though they got this one right um it's a perfect representation of that original g1 Weird Wolf just modernized to today's standard. This is fantastic. He looks amazing. Bringing him in close, take a look at the head. Again, perfect G1 head. That looks exactly like the artwork of G1 uh, Weird Wolf did in the packaging. That looks amazing. And just kind of taking a look at all the details. The only thing really that's missing it, as have uh, as it's been missing with all of these modern ones is the panel that opens up to show the tech specs that's really it but you know they've done all of the molding and all of the detailing to kind of replicate the original stickers as well and we'll see that when we'll bring the g1 figure in very very cool and going all the way around not a lot of cable to speak of again you know what we're just bringing the g1 figure now 
Look at this. Yeah. Again, that G1 figure just, just there, there's nothing for this to do. There's nowhere for it to go. There's no way to really just kind of make that look good. Look at how much this cleaned up. That looks amazing. Going all the way around so you can see the figure. On all the way around. Fantastic looking figure. Again, for comparison, the G1 figure. So you can look at all the little details. You've got the little cannon pods right here on the shoulders that the G1 figure had. You've got that nice Decepticon logo right there on the chest. And then these little molded vents right here on the thighs to replicate the original stickers. These molded details right here on the shins to replicate these stickers down here. Very, very cool stuff. I really love the way they replicated this figure. It looks so amazing. Getting into the articulation again, because Monso's head is on a ball joint, so is Weird Wolves. So, you know, you got your side to side and a little bit of rocking forward, backward, side to side, that kind of thing. Shoulders on a ball joint can go all the way around that in and out that far. You can rotate at the elbow. You can, or sorry, rather at the bicep, you can bend at the elbow and um, no rotation at the wrist because of the way he transforms. He does have rotation at the waist, but it is limited. He can only go that far and that far. And that's because of this panel back here is not going to allow you to rotate this all the way. The hips are on a ball joint, forward, backward, in and out, rotation at the thigh, bend at the knee. I guess that rotation is at the knee as well, just above the knee. Bend at the knee. And again, the feet are on ball joints. So you got forward, backward, back, up and down, side to side, all that kind of stuff. Very nice figure, very articulate. And again, this guy proportionately looks amazing. If you remember with my mind wipe, I wasn't very happy with mind wipe because he just looks so skinny and lanky. This guy is perfectly proportionate. He is just blocky enough, but he's also just thin enough and pulsable enough and just very animated looking it just it just again it's one of those figures that looks like he's moving when he's standing still beautiful figure this I, I just cannot praise this figure enough it is so so cool so for weapons we can do a couple of things with the gun of course you can hold it as a gun and that'll work and then you can also use any of these pegs and again you've got the pegs on the side so if you've got monzo inside or any other titan master inside you can peg this any of the base uh, Transformers or the City Formers or anything like that to make a little station right there. One thing I like about this is that you can use these pegs on the side and there's ports on his shoulders and you can plug this right there on his shoulder. And I know this is not G1 accurate, but man, I love how that looks. Just having him hold, and you can put it on either shoulder, it doesn't matter, but just absolutely love Weird Wolf with a shoulder gun. I don't know what that what it is about it, but I love it. And then, of course, the tail becomes a sword, just like the G1 figure did. And you can just put that in his hand. And uh, there you go. He looks very swashbuckling right there. Look at that. I mean, this <laughs> that was my fault. Um, yeah, I don't really have any issues standing this figure up or anything like that. But yeah, check that out. This figure is just so articulated and animated looking. And just, I, again, I cannot praise it enough. Absolutely love this figure so now bringing in some more comparisons we're going to bring in the aforementioned mind wipe we'll put this guy right here so you can see what these guys look like together and here he is also with skull cruncher so you can see the whole team together looking really really nice and again you know with standing with these two guys mind wipe is starting to look a little better to me by himself didn't impress me as part of the team like him much much better but weird wolf I think is definitely the winner of this group. Don't get me wrong, Skull Cruncher, also very good figure. We're going to be looking at him very soon. But my by far favorite out of these guys has been, out of the Decepticons, has been Weird Wolf. He could possibly be my favorite out of all seven of these figures. I don't know yet, but I just cannot say enough good things about this figure. It was the sleeper for me. I was not expecting to like it as much as I do, but man, really, really love this figure and i think that about does it for the transformers titan returns g1 style reissue retro reissue whatever you want to call it weird wolf and monk so what did you think of this figure let me know down in the comments give me some thumbs up subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when i upload a new video i've got a donate button up there if you want to head on that i certainly would appreciate it please share with your friends if you like what you see and i'll talk to you next time